What is good? Got the fresh crack in the OG tripod back in the hood, ready the OGs. to ready to roll. Ready to roll. Uh, last show we didn't quite get to Benson and Brooks, but I feel like it's important to cover where these running backs are going and what they're doing, and, and some some moves to make here with these with these running backs. Kind of same general principle. If you just listened to the last show, if you're not already like subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. But make sure you're doing that. Uh, and I, we want to. Brooks is is ascending. Benson certainly has as at least stabilized and really hasn't moved a whole lot. Uh, and then we're gonna hopefully get to that next big group of wide receivers: Keon Coleman, Pierce, Leggett, Ad Mitchell, and kind of discuss what moves we can make on or off of those guys. So uh, to jump right into this, I, I think um, Jonathan Brooks has has really ascended as the RB1, got the draft capital, and you know the landing spot isn't super sexy, but I've been talking on this show for a minute now. I've just really, not going to call it love yet, but fallen in like with what the Panthers are doing. You have a, a seemingly a deliberate head coach of knows, knows exactly what he wants and how he wants to operate and the personnel he wants to operate that. And I feel like that is not a direction that we've seen the Carolina Panthers go in. And there's framework on that roster that isn't that bad. Like those, the year before that was, I don't, don't know how many guys are still on that, but the year before that was, before last year when Steve Wilkes was the interim, they were playing fucking good ball at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And then it was just a mess mm -hmm. from Frank Reich on. There was clearly just, they, they didn't have things fitting and junking and jiving with the office and the GM and, and Frank is coordinator face or maybe nothing face. Okay. And now you have a guy who's had great success. He's dug guys out of the dirt ADP mm -hmm. into, into studs quarterback whisperer. They're calling uh, this guy for sure. And, 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 and Bryce is, is should be right in there with that. And and you know, what, what's good for Brooks is that you've got a receiver that has one of the highest open scores in Deontay, Thielen was fine last year. He's going to be fine. Mingo played a lot. Mm -hmm. Might not have done a whole a lot, lot but snaps. played a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, shouldn't be dead to anybody. Figure out where the value is and figure out if you like him or not. It's, it's okay. But you address the offensive line, hard and heavy. You spent a lot of cash there. You got to keep Bryce upright. And then you went and got yourself another running back uh, who can do a lot of different things for you, who could be a workhorse, who's a great pass catcher. Maybe doesn't quite have the top end speed that you want. Uh, but does a lot of things really, really well and just happened to be behind Bijan for a long time. And when he got a chance without an ACL would have certainly been undisputed RB1 and was RB1 for most people for all of the cycle of, of the draft. So here we are uh, and we have Brooks averaging around 612 ADP mm -hmm. in startups. Right. And we're going to equate this to rookie drafts. If you if you if you blew that up and you went, hey. Where does that equate to the rookie draft? That'd be 112 if, if you took all the startup picks and put them in order of uh, through our ADP. If you took all the startup picks. You just took the rookies out of the ADP right, and, and lined them up. Lined them up. He's the 12th he, rookie He'd be the out. 12th rookie in the startups. Okay. And going at 612. And we obviously just had a conversation about that pocket that's above him and he's in he's 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 intruder he's in he, he's uh you know he's a cat cat burglared his way right into that little they didn't have simply safe he sure has uh, and 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 jump, has jumped right into there to the startup perspective i i'm all in on benson and and brooks brooks it's just you get to that point in the startup and it's like uh, it's the olds it's mm -hmm. the older guys and then it's a bunch of guys where it's like they've had some good chunks and parts and pieces but I'm not sold on those guys. So conversely of kind of what I was saying with the wide receivers of saying, hey, I'm going this way with the guys I know that could play. I think I'm going the other way with these running backs right here. So Big Co, what, what kind of what are you thinking here uh, with a guy like Jonathan Brooks? And let's let's uh, for me, I think the big discussion comes down if, if you were equating it to either your rookie drafts or your startups, guys like James Cook, uh, Rashad White. Isaiah Pacheco, Swift, uh, and then Jacobs a little ahead of those guys. Where do you stand on taking Brooks in a startup or in Brooks in a rookie draft in, in the first round or anywhere around there? And then how do you feel about those guys kind of around him? Is there one or two that really stand out? We can go guy for guy, however you want to kind of approach this. But I am of the feeling that give me Brooks over Cook, White, and Pacheco for sure. Uh, but so what, do you, what are your thoughts here? Well, you started out with saying the Panthers coach, Dave Canales, about his deliberateness and what he wants to do. And he knows what he wants to do. And he knows who he wants to use. 
the quarterback whisperer, they call him now. But just go back to what he said was going to happen on the Tampa Bay Bucks. He said, we're going to pound the rock. Mm. And he, I love just, it. Yes. You know, all, all through the inefficiencies of the yards per carry and all that stuff, kept White on the field as a bell cow. And he caught the 70 balls or whatever that he caught. He broke a couple touchdowns here and there. And he. Big abs- part of what they did. A big, huge, huge part. So then he he leaves and at right when it happened i was like wow i mean the panthers just had because of the way the owner's owner was operating his business they had limited chances to get a good right nobody wanted know, to go nobody there. wanted to go to be the panthers You're coach. scratching your head who's going to be the guy i think they landed a uh, gym uh, i mean how did it how did he pull that it's off just smells like the texans right? how do you do that this right smells like the texans so i'm i'm thinking you know, you said defense isn't on that level. You said, you know, what what would you do with Jonathan Brooks in a startup and this, and what would you do in a rookie draft and stuff? And all of my dynasty teams, uh, most of my let me say most of my dynasty teams, I had planned my rookie drafts around the wide receivers, which is what and, and the quarterbacks, which is what you're supposed to do this year, right? That's we're, we're hey, we're no good running backs this year. Well, obviously, you know, Jonathan Brooks, we think he's a stud. He's got no knee right now. He's coming back. And then Trey Benson for Florida State was out there cutting up cats and breaking long runs. Previously then, had no knee a while ago. And then when he transferred and, from Oregon. And then those two are the first two guys in, in in the draft. Well, the Panthers obviously prioritized Brooks and took him fairly early, early enough. And then I just feel like Canales comes over here, wastes no time in the draft to go get his running back. Mm. He tells you now. He's telling you we're going to run the ball. Mm. He's telling you the exact same thing he told you last year for the Bucks. Mm-hmm. And obviously, week one, I'm not worried about. I mean, this is dynasty, so I'm not. I'm, Brooks is coming back from a, an ACL, so I'm not worried about. This is you know week one. People are like, is it Brooks going to be on the field week one? I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'd, I'd rather he wait for a while. Yeah, I right. Don't care. I don't care. I don't. It's not about the week one. It's about the dynasty, and I just want him to get out there when he's healthy and look like he's supposed to look, and then end the season on a high note. So he's like you said, much more valuable than these guys drafted around him next year. Um, I could see James Cook killing it again next year in the total yards department. Obviously, uh, he's not going to get many from the five-yard and in rush and touchdowns because of Josh Allen, and then uh, they just brought in the uh, the rookie, the, the bruiser, um, from what is the dude from Kentucky? The old, the Ray old Davis. Ray Davis. Um, I can see, I mean, if we're, if we're talking startup and we're talking Jonathan Brooks versus these guys, like, I can see taking Jonathan Brooks over White in a startup. I can see taking Jonathan Brooks over Pacheco. I think we all can agree Pacheco is probably going to crush again this year. It's just that it's that undrafted, that seventh round rookie stink that's like r- running back. Like Pacheco did nothing but improve for the Chiefs. Right. But we wouldn't be would we be surprised if he got replaced at some point. Now you can I, you can bring in and you can create your own narrative around. Hey, they won the championship two years in a row. Pacheco's been a big piece of that. Sure. Next last year he took some big steps, and then you start talking about being you know he's part of the family and he's been around. He's got rings. We did it with him already. Why do we need to replace him? So I, like Pacheco's workload is obviously a given at this point. Um, but I think Jonathan Rooks for the dynasty, when Canales starts throwing the ball to him, Pacheco's not catching a ton of passes. Brooks pass catching ability, Dave Canales, workhorse. Like, well, all, we, well, all we're looking for is, a, is the few and far between bell cow. Mm-hmm. Pacheco had 44 catches last year. I would have. That 44 ain't bad. That. 44 ain't bad, but it ain't 70 or 80 like Rashad White. And it's that's kind of how Jonathan. And that, all, and then, all the and then you mold all, got better. Right, and then you mold all that together with Bryce Young. Mm-hmm. And you know Bryce Young's not going to be sitting there doing seven step drops, hanging out in the pocket forever. It's going to be let's get some quick. Let's hey, we got that. We got those two big time guards. We yeah. paid some money. And again, it's some, week one. Brooks might not be there, but it's like hey, we're going to keep Bryce upright, and we need to get the ball out fast because we want him to stay upright. Right. And a lot of that is going to be to develop. We, you know, we need him. To, we can't develop from his back. Yeah. So I, I think that Brooks is going to get a ton of checkdowns and a ton of not necessarily just checkdowns but like schemed mm. passes where just it's get like, it out quick get it out of yeah you know take the snap you look up feel like you're about to do something with it but then the quarterback and there's been a but then the running back's leaking and there's a guard pulling over there to get out in front of it and you bank you know i just feel like the, the brooks to me i understand why jonathan brooks is steaming up the draft boards and i and and to me well, I was out on the running backs for a while because I wanted to build around the wide receiver safety nets and then go buy my running backs later 
And I feel like Jonathan Brooks is totally in like I'm I'm excited to draft territory. Yeah, now. well he's not all he's not he's not terribly expensive, but I think he's in a really good spot here and, and to make the moves, moves to make of sending the Pachecos, the Whites, the Cooks for, for Brooks in your in your rookie drafts. Um to, to make that swap out. Um for, for me, DeAndre Swift, same thing. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll, my, the move to make here would be, hey, you're in your rookie draft anywhere where you want to that Jonathan Brooks is still hanging around 111, 112, 110 or whatever. And, and, and this is super flex tight end premium. That's what we're talking. When sure. We talk this. Um, you know, yeah, if you can send DeAndre Swift and get in a rookie draft or even straight up after the after the rookie draft is a lot less likely because somebody decided Brooks was their guy. Uh, end of rookie draft is a time to draft if you got De- a swift right for Deion swift plus a little bit to get brooks is to me is a no-brainer hey guys a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the ff dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows mock drafts roster reviews and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings adp and player pages all for your pleasure and i'll lump benson into this conversation we're not going to go in depth with the cardinals at the moment because we just spent a lot of time on carolina and brooks but i feel the same way with benson one guy's coming off an acl and might sit a while the other guy has connor there who's, sure. who's really good both of those guys profile as workhorses i think benson has better uh hands and catching ability than than given i've seen him make some really great catches out there um, but he, he can he can hammer at home. He's got the home run speed. Uh, Absolutely. What, what kind of what Brooks maybe doesn't have Brooks mm-hmm. Brooks a little more elusive potentially. Uh, but there's a lot of broken tackles in Benson's uh, future and, and past. And, and Connor hasn't been the healthiest. And, I you know, both teams, I think, are on, on the come ups. Yeah, I like I like what Gannon's done over there. I like the, I like the direction that they're moving in. And, and when we talk about all these things, those are the things that I like to buy into the, the do I want to buy into James Cook? Yeah, I do. But the, the, the bills have told me over and over and over again that they're just not going to commit to giving Cook the workload that I really want. At, and I, I, that's why I want Benson and Brooks, because I think those guys are guys who could be committed to the workload of their team. I like um, it. Rashad White did get the workload inefficient with it. Great pass catcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're already trying that they've they're already kind of talking about, hey, we want we need another guy in here. Where we could see conceding work. Well, um, Dave Canales left. So where do we go from there? Right. Right. And, and it's th- only Bucky there. And, and Rashad White probably gets too much shade and Pacheco too much shade. But I want to move on to those guys that are just coming in, have, haven't had a few seasons to make people's minds up and decisions on. Those guys could be second, third round startup pick running backs next year. And now I want to be able to move off of, you know, the, the Cooks, the Whites, the Swifts there. And not all those guys, very useful players. I just like the trajectory of what those guys can be and, and that they're on. I want to buy into teams and situations as much as the players yeah let me i like that and let me piggyback the the name equity like you said i mean just like javante at, williams or those two running backs not even close right so cook That's not, i don't think you could trade javante for those guys i'm just saying no you had to ask them but james cook rashad white and pacheco we're talking about we're in the sixth to seventh round of a startup those three guys were all rb ones last year mm-hmm. and they're in the sixth and seventh round of a startup because none of those guys came from really anywhere with draft capital you know and then and they definitely didn't come out with i mean maybe james cook came into the league his most important thing was he was dalva's brother <laughs> right yeah. like you know and so in pacheco he barely ma- he barely yeah. made the cut in the draft yeah and so i just like if trey benson breaks off a long run it's gonna be every all everybody can talk about and when jonathan brooks gets in there like you said he's not nearly as flashy as trey benson but he could do everything and he's got he's got the first, you know, second round capital. He's coming from Texas. He's he's still got that shiny new. We don't really know how good he could have been because he did get hurt after. You know, he was looking really, really good. He's behind Bijan, so I just feel like, like you said, the workload that those other veterans already put in, and for the, there's just the respect's not even there on him. Yeah, and and so, I mean, I I, I fully think that Rashad White and James Cook are going to do some serious work this year yeah. and Pacheco I think all three of those guys and they're really good picks in a dynasty startup and you could tap out you could double tap you could be at the end of a round and you could grab you know one of those veterans and one of those rookies and and take get a little get upside a nice little running back room and get started. a little, get a starter and get a little upside you know bang bang get those guys together if you want I like what you said there and then and, and then kind of tie that in with 
Benson and Brooks are just primed to shoot up the dynasty startup board next year. Yeah. And so their value, I just, I don't see how many times if you play the season out that those two rookies are not going to be more valuable than those three veterans that you just called out because give those veterans the, the respect they deserve for last year and we're They've already not. played pretty well and nobody cares it, all that. Exactly. It's, it's they care enough that, they, that, that we know they're they useful. They played but, very well. Right. And I mean, we, 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 well, they played very well. We say that. I mean, like Rashad White, we harp on how bad his inefficiencies are for being a running back between the tackles. Quit a lot of touchdowns. Well, he, he was freaking, yeah, you know, top was, five PPR guy. Yeah, he he catch the passes. He solid. Pacheco was good. I mean, Cook was and good. And he was their goal line back, too. And really I mean, spots, Bucky yeah. Irvin's obviously not coming in to be the goal line back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's shift gears. We talked about one pocket of, of wide receivers in the first video we did. Again, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Uh, and if you're not, if you listen on the podcast, hit us with that five star review. If you're on the Patreons, or if you're not on the Patreons, get over there. There's a free one, and there's five dollar holler. We got all that's where all this information's coming from. All all the drafts, uh, ADPs. If you want to mock it up before you fuck it up, that is the place to be. So then you get three extra episodes. So this other group of receivers that I'm talking about, it's the Ricky Pearsalls and, and Keon Coleman and Xavier Leggett and AD Mitchell, right? Mm-hmm. So th- those guys, you know, similarly to Lad Worthy. And Brian Thomas, those guys get all jumbled up in the order that they go. But they're usually you could throw a Polk in there sometimes if, if there's a big Polk guy. But those are usually that next course of wide receivers. And I'd say Coleman usually leads the pack mm-hmm. on that. Let's talk about how you how you're valuing that chunk and pocket in the in the draft and the moves to make in or around that area or or to get into that area. And then and then we'll we'll throw some guys out that are around there and we'll we'll, we'll hit you with some moves to make or, you know, would you rather kind of stuff. Sure. All right. Well, in the first video, we talked about that first pocket, the one nine, one twelve 12 pocket with Worthy, Thomas and Ladd. Uh, I really what I really should have said was I'm taking those guys a lot in the startup draft because I'm probably hammered wide receivers earlier. And now I'm looking for my high upside, and, you know, because mm-hmm. we started talking about the T Higgins and all that stuff. And I, I'm looking for somebody who can really just crush it for me and move straight up, whereas any Ricky Pearsall, I don't expect him to crush it early. And I think if you draft him with those expectations, you're doing it wrong because unless something happens with some of those starters, injury or trade prior to, but I'm drafting Ricky Pearsall with a smile on my face because he's a first round pick to the Niners. Right. Right. And a locked in. I mean, the coach and and GM both re up their deals. So the the regime that drafted him in the first round didn't go anywhere. The coach hired the GM. So the coach ain't getting fired, you know, and then, and Brock Purdy, he ain't going anywhere. And so, and the system's only going to keep getting better. So I, I'm drafting Ricky Pearsall with a smile on my face, but with zero expectations of actual, like in my starting lineup year one, nah, dude, but he's yeah. going to be really nice on my taxi or on my bench. And I'm going to like having him there. He's a, he's a, he's an asset, right? So in that spot, the opposite for Keon Coleman, Keon Coleman's going to be on the field early and often. And I think he's going to get some targets and mm. I think he's going to do well with them. Um, AD Mitchell. I think he's going to get some targets, not nearly on the Keon Coleman level. And I think A.D. Mitchell's going to flash ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to flash the Brian Thomas ridiculousness in a similar way. Maybe even I got a little bit more muscle on my frame type of thing. Uh, and the Leggett, you know, I really was th- – I'm torn on – Hmm. I'm torn on Leggett to the Panthers because it's, they got a couple other mouths to feed and they got the Bryce Young experiment, but they got the Dave Canales and Dave Canales has said Leggett does all we're going to need to ask him to do. Love so it. like, I don't see how, I don't see how they let Leggett fail. You know, I, they, uh, they went and you talking about prioritize. They went and got him before they got Jonathan Brooks. And then, you know, uh, there was that Xavier Leggett accidentally told people that <laughs> the Panthers are going to draft me when I'm getting at 31 or 32 or whatever, or the first pick of the second round or something. And then they had to, you know, put Canales in a tough spot. So he had yeah. to go on, you know, go into the presser and lie. It's like, I told 50 people that I told yeah. 50 players that, you know, that's how you do it. And then they get a chance and they trade up to take him. Yeah. What they need to do is they need to get him and Keon Coleman and put them on a vacation here and just film oh, the whole goddamn sure. thing. No, and then just no that would be so much no fun doubt. to watch. So <laughs> this pocket to me is a lot of fun. I, yeah. ex- I expect, Massive inconsistency at a at, at a AD Mitchell. I think all of them. I think that's kind of what this. I think it's Matt. Like the other the other rookies, you expected a little bit, but you think, but that, there could be huge chunks of the season where you're going, God, is it, are these guys any good? Uh, but yeah, I I think they're all a lot of fun. I think they're all 
so much fun. And these are guys that when the, in the startup draft, I'm taking, I want to be in this area of the draft in the startup, taking these type of guys with plenty of starters on my bench, wide receiver wise. And what's interesting is the startup part of this is so different than the rookie draft part of this. When you expand. These, so if oh, you, you talking about in the startup, how they spread out. Well, no, when you, when you're in the startup, like, and we're going to talk about some of these guys here, but you know, Keon Coleman's the first one to go, right? But then all around those guys, it's Mike Evans, it's Stephon Diggs, it's Devontae Adams, it's Terry McLaurin, it's Cooper Cup. It's all like, so what do you do? You get in that part of that startup and, and we can we can touch on this. And I know there's a point I want to talk about here after we talk about some would you rathers and maybe it'll naturally unfold. But like in the startup part of it, like I'm gathering up these guys for sure because it's a, you know, you're, you're it's, it's taking a bunch of old guys who are going to be dead in a year. Um, well, so that's, that depre- you know. the, the depreciation, the depreciating asset that we talked mm-hmm. about, you know, last week when I was here, when we did the startup mock and, and the dynasty startup strategies to, you know, and taking the quarterback a little bit later. And that's kind of what we talked about is, Hey, I got a handful of wide receivers on my team already. And, you know, do I expect Devonte Adams to outscore Keon Coleman and and Mike Evans to Absolutely outscore? Not. I'm taking those rookies right there for the obviously the high upside, but the best also asset available. How you're built, a little yeah. Bit, I mean, but. Diggs is Diggs is already in the eighth round. Yeah, you know, and 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 so and Devonte Adams in eighth round. It was two years ago he was a first round startup. Mm-hmm. Two years, Devonte Adams. Yes, yeah, two I, years I, ago he was two one ADP. Yeah, that's a that's a seven round drop right yeah. there. And in two years, and I mean, it's just which way you think he's Slain going last year uh, with a quarterback change, Keon Coleman or Debo? Now that's a serious question right there. Uh, I dun, think, dun, dun. yeah, I mean, I I could probably still take Debo right there. Okay, uh, you you went up in the league. Oh, I was on I was on Mike Evans and down. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. know. I shifted. You jump back up. You you jump back up. But I mean, I got that's fine. I mean, Keon Coleman can. I've seen Keon Coleman get taken in front of Brian Thomas in a rookie draft. You know. Mm-hmm. You can you can get on your flavor there. If Debo's suited up, he's a top ten wide receiver. His fantasy points scored, mm-hmm. you know. But I I think uh, I think Debo is obviously done. Even though his nothing age wrong isn't quite up there with down. those other guys, but it seems like body miles, wise, yeah, yeah, body yeah, miles yeah, yeah, is yeah. up there with those guys. Yeah. How about Jaden Reed or really any of those guys? Pearsall, Coleman, Leggett, Ad Mitchell. Well, Mr. Reed. The dynasty community right now thinks that Jaden Reed's more valuable than all those guys, and I'm gonna cash out on that value there. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I would take, I would rather have the those rookies plus whatever I could get for not having Jaden Reed on my team. If I'm in a dynasty startup and Jaden Reed's right there, then obviously I'm just trading back. And I, if I miss, you know, I, I'll trade back as as little as I can. To make, but I mean, there is. 103. I mean, there's three rounds in between Jaden Reed and Ricky Pearsall, but mm-hmm. Jaden Reed's going to be on the field scoring points. Ricky Pearsall's going to be on my bench, but I understand that. But there's I only, mean, you know, eight picks or so between Jaden Reed and Keon Coleman. Exactly. I bet you could get a second round pick to back up those eight picks. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have to do a two four swap, mm-hmm. something like that. But Bad I move to make, you know, I, I, I don't have anything against Jaden Reed. I just think he, uh, well, it's I the, think he's a little overvalued. I, I don't, yeah, in your bra. The the problem is 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 it's not his fault. I I think I think if there was two less guys there, he'd be well. That absolutely, you know, very properly rated, if not underrated. But the the, the expanding upon, I don't want to seem like I don't like Jaden Reed and Big Co don't like Jaden Reed. It's it's the fact that there's five dudes in there Six, who, have, who have all who have all been very strong and now you had jacobs the tight in, the fold. in there well, and that's jacobs yeah jacobs in there and marshawn Loy could catch some passes and um you know you got two good tight ends that were rookies last year you got wicks who was awesome last year you got romeo dubs who in big time areas and throughout the playoffs was their guy yeah christian watson hadn't even been on the field for you know god knows how long i saw a stat the other day in the 142 snaps that Jaden reed Romeo and Dubs and Christian Watson were on the field together, which isn't a lot. That's only like three games, two and a half games worth of snaps. Christian Watson had the most uh, target percentage. Yeah. You know, and Jade, I think Jaden Reed was underneath Dubs. I would kind of tend to agree there. Um, all right, let's let's keep it moving. Let's say we're in the startup and you're in that 2-4 to 2-7 range. Does, does Diggs and Adams and Evans and Cup – they they get you into that into those spots to get those if you're in that version of things. I just traded Diggs for to be in that tier. Uh-huh. I want all those rookies over all those guys. Now, what if you're like championship ready to go, hundred percent? I traded Diggs off a team that won three years in a row. 
Well, that's a little different. Trying to stay, that's a little different. But I'm, you, I'm just trying to you, stay you're just relevant. collecting checks. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm right. Just, sure. you know, I'm trying that's to stay. I don't yeah. want to. I've said it with the running backs. I said it with a little bit different group of receivers last time I was here. Devontae Adams doesn't even have a quarterback right now. Mm-hmm. Gardner Minshew I, or Rod Farva? I mean, I guess, <laughs> you know, Minshew, like Favre, Minshew, plays like Favre. <laughs> Minshew threw the ball to Pittman over and over and over again last year, but it was a little different offensive scheme. They had an RPO, and it was Pittman. Fake handoff, Pittman. Fake. I don't know how the Raiders are oh, going to play. He locks into one guy. He didn't throw the shit so out. So maybe Devontae Adams, Adams He's still going to be it. good. But uh, obviously, he's, one of the, uh, he's, yeah. he's still one of the best receivers in the game. I just think da- dynasty value-wise, I think all, these, all, guys, all these guys are going to move up, yeah. and Devontae Adams is going to move down. And by the time I get in the eighth round, I don't need Devontae Adams as a starter. I would Devontae Adams, as a, he would still probably be a starter. And if nothing else, he would be the most ridiculously good depth on my bench. I just, that's not where in this target, in this area, in this pocket of the draft, I'm not looking for an old receiver. Yeah. Right. And I'll t- I said it about, that's what it was. I said, if Terry McLaurin is running hot with his new Jaden Daniels, you're not going to be able to get him right. as cheap in the, in week three as you can right now, because there's still those question marks on his quarterback. That you, what happened to Mike Evans last year? Yeah, Terry's did, a little younger than all those. Did guys. we expect Mike Evans to do that? Right. No. Well, we talked you know? about canal is really bringing. Exactly. Really right, bringing so Evans. I just I'm I'm taking all those rookies. All right, Obviously, I'm not drafting Ricky Pearsall, whose ADP is in the ninth round over a veteran that's but over at Mike Evans at seven ten. I'll just trade back. Yeah. So let's let's add let's downshift value. to the non quite as old, and we can we could probably leave Terry out of this conversation. But let, let's go down to like guys like Kirk and Ridley and Hollywood Brown for uh, the Pearsalls, the Coleman's. Uh, or we'll leave Coleman out of this one, like a Pearsall or a Leggett. Yeah, because I mean, I I expect a Leggett to be getting targets. I still want Leggett. You know, I do. I want do I want um, Christian Kirk in my in my lineup week one to help me go win a championship. I absolutely do. I think there's definitely a little bit of a. So I think there's a, a little a bit more of a there, like, like a, a team build operation there. Especially, I mean, if you're talking, if you're talking. Uh, startup is different if you have an existing league and you're like hey I'm, a, I'm on a rookie draft and i can trade this pick for christian kirk or do i draft for xavier leggett you know i just i like leggett I, I like the idea of what he can become um and i like the idea of how many points that christian kirk's gonna score this year I'm, that's a I'm, right. I'm very torn. so that's that's kind of we downshift in age a few years so you have you at least feel like you got three years with any of those deontay right. yeah uh godwin godwin might be a herald in the deontay johnson Hollywood's a little younger than both of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it comes down to... I still... I won't Leggett do, all those. I, it's do? best asset available. Because yeah. if, if Leggett takes a one to the house week one, you'll never be able to buy him. So I, I, could go, I can go get Deontay Johnson cheap when I need to. So this would be... A, you know, I have a team that I took over that that isn't very good. I would take Coleman and Pearsall or Leggett and Pearsall yeah. in that conversation. But I have other teams where it's like I'm ready to go. I'm good. I got I got a good team. I, I do have a pretty good starting lineup. But I, you know, instead of do you take do you take the known points or do you take the the value? Because that's what it comes down to right here, right? The, the inevitably for the most part, Kirk, Deontay, they could move up a little bit, but they're not going to skyrocket to the top. Coleman or Leggett and, and Pearsall could skyrocket to the top, but they also might be nothing at all. Right. Like so. The, the you know for me for the most part if I have a competitive team I'll take the Hollywoods for the mid two I'll take the Kirk for the mid two mm-hmm. I'll take the Deontay for the mid two because I know those guys can score wide receiver two shit every week and be a wide receiver one some weeks we hope that that's what those guys are going to be and and Pearsall and and I mean Leggett even more so than Pearsall could could certainly just come out and be a dominant number one and then you throw A.D. Mitchell in that realm and you know he he drips with maybe the most upside out of those guys mm-hmm. um so that's a little bit trickier of a conversation but you know handling the so moves to make you know i'd be mid two for the kirks deontay hollywood but really the conversation is kind of like handling the known points versus the unknown of potentially insulated value but i mean shit jsn was the best guy in the draft class and they didn't get results from him and all he's he's you know dropping mm-hmm. down a little bit he stayed some insulated but you know as we discovered in the last show probably probably dropped down a little bit and, and some people are completely out already like it feels like you, you'll be so out on xavier like a lot of people oh for sure so out so fast if it's not gangbusters 
through season one. Yeah, he's old already, and he's, he's, uh, he's a fifth out. round. Late, late, first time, never broke out. Right. First Not time a bunch somebody of ever broke out at 27 years right. old as a college. <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure. They'll be out on him so fast. So how? Do, what are your th- general? I, mean, I think you, you've kind of been well, I guess one dredging of problems, it up as we went through. I guess one of the problems there is like even like you said, I, the, my, I guess my, my biggest roadblock there is, it, you know, you're like, if I got a good team, if you got a dominant team, I still I want all those rookies for the upside to continue to be the dominance. And it's like if you like if you got a dominant team and you're like, hey, I got my my second round pick next year is going to be late. Does it take do I can I give a two and a four and get Hollywood and just put him on my team? You know, that's one thing I want to try to do or something like that. It's like, all right, I want to get into next year's picks, rookies that we don't know nothing about and try to buy a veteran right now. Well, how many how many second round pick or, or you know, uh, you know, pr- I think you and I packaged up a, you know, it was kind of a much bigger package, but say I had, you know, a Marvin Mims and a, this guy and a, this guy that really didn't blow up last year, but I packaged a couple of them and I went and I gave this guy, Josh Downs, I gave some youth and some, and some potential upside for, for Christian Kirk on a team that we want to win. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I'm, I don't, you know, you get that rookie fever, man. It's a hell of a drug. Right. There's these guys that are in the middle of this second round in a rookie draft right now this year that I feel like are just are easily in the back end of a first round normally because this is is deep yeah and it's deep with some quality and i just feel like you know I'm, i don't want to listen to those guys that say oh yeah everybody saw it but it was deep and then all of a sudden it's really not that deep there's just a couple good guys at the front and there's and it's, it's pretty bad oh man we're in the middle yeah. of the second round and we're talking about some some guys who could be really good i That's mean what i mean i, I still i want to <laughs> yeah. take i want to take those shots and you know now if you're a middling team trying to quote unquote rebuild, you're not like the worst team ever, then maybe you just, you know, you need to trade the odd the ability to draft some of these guys and get a youngish, decent veteran plus something. And you need to cause you don't you don't want to wrap all your equity up and you got one second round pick and you throw it on leg it yeah i don't i don't see i don't think that's a really good way to play your hand if you're trying to dig out of the dirt yeah you know you might want to go sideways now i don't think christian kirk is the right way to go if you're trying to dig out of the dirt because he ain't gonna help your team you know but you could go sideways and and pick up you know a a jsn plus this plus this is that you know it's like all right well something like that where you get somebody who double your double your value somehow maybe trade back out of that tier yeah you know and get two two picks later something like that uh, you know instead of forcing if you're bad if you're bad bad and you got one pick in the first and you got one pick in the second maybe you yeah, know yeah I, I guess that's that kind of you know, idea if i'm if i'm a pretty good team if i'm and i'm i'm vying for a championship and i'm buying those those the kirks and the hollywoods with those mid twos i feel like i'm confident and or or saying you know, going into that next year's pile and gun go, I feel pretty confident that if I have a pretty good roster that I can get a two back at some point in the year. Sure. If things start going the wrong way, good you know point. what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I'm not in too much of a hole there. I can recover a little bit. If my, if my roster is pretty good, if you're, if you're a barren roster, then it's, it's not that good. And, and I, you know, I probably do want to take a shot on AD Mitchell to, to, there's going to be a lot of, as the, as the children say, hopium, uh, there, uh, where, <laughs> uh, you know, nobody's nobody can you know, perennially nobody cares about Amari Cooper or, you know, Deontay Johnson. For that, years they haven't cared. Well, sure. And he's just been slaying. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Uh, you got anything else before we get out of here on this little pocket of, of an approach or, or moves to make? I don't think so. All right. I well. can't believe we did two shows tonight <laughs> and not a single time did you say off the rip. Uh, What's well, going on? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't a lot, a, a lot a single of it trigger is, word the whole time. We do a lot of mocking, so that's usually how the, what would be the crux of off the rip <laughs> would uh, you know would be in there because that's kind of how things are going, and you know, no so. offs got ripped tonight. No, we uh, we we kept it all under oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, well of course, yeah. also one hundred. <laughs> Always one hundred. Never that's nothing. Any. That's never ninety nine. No, no. Yeah, I would say also no silly hats or headwear, but you have a hat on. It's not silly, at least. So. It's not a bandana it's another, or a headband. Another win for us. So Bill's a little flat for me, but it's okay. Mm. It's yeah. not completely mm. flat. Mm. Mm. Got to get some curve in that thing. Nah. Got to get that rubber band around the baseball bow. No, nah, no, 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 no. I need the sticker on 100%. Well, really. we'll leave with this. As Jadakus says, 
Y'all are just talking. We're doing it well. Be sure to keep it locked and loaded. Like, subscribe, comment below. Five-star review yeah. if you're listening on the pod. Dion, Colorado, going to come and crush this year. Let's go. Uh, a lot of fun last year. Um, Patreon, $5 holler. Mox, out the yin-yang, ADP, draft kit over there with so much rookie good draft rookie, kit, rookie baby. information going down. We got rookie drafts going on. We got leagues. We're, you know, we, we just formed FFD5, so there might be another one, but we're going to be getting into some best ball uh, action as well where, you know, people $5, $10, $20 best balls, we're going to be firing those off all yes, offseason sir. long. Uh, have a little fun over there. So we'll throw that out to the public too, but, you know, better, better chance if you're on the free Discord or the paid Discord. Um, but we appreciate all the support and we'll catch you next time. No, we said it. Peace. <laughs>